good morning. I'm about to head out to get my hair done. I thought I'd show you my outfit of the day to start the video. So we have got my jumper that I've had for years. I'm pretty certain I got this in Trey Mills in like 2016 or something. I don't even know. Naked Generation dress, which is probably my favourite Naked Generation dress because look at the skirt. It's so big and I can wear it all year because of the colours. I can wear it in summer as a, just a dress on its own and in the winter it's so cute with a jumper. I've got my Doc Martens on, my vegan Doc Martens, which are the squeakiest shoes on the planet. Why is this camera? I'm using the G7X because I'm about to head out and it is so bad in comparison to my other camera. Um, we have got my Alex Munro necklace and then this one is from, it's like a little M, you can get your own initial with a pearl and this is a present for my birthday from Lily, Lillian Rue, is that the name? Really yeah. yeah, I got my bridesmaid necklaces from there as well, but this is so pretty. Present from my sister and brother-in-law. And yeah, this one was a present from Alex for Christmas with little mushrooms. Earrings, I have absolutely no idea where these are from. And then these are Vray Lab Diamond ones I wear every day. Hopefully my hair is gonna look refreshed, get rid of all of the greys, and I think we're probably gonna have chopping quite a lot off because as you can see, the end pieces are quite thin compared to the rest of my hair. It always does this. And I mentioned it in the last video, but I want to get it like more blunt at the bottom so that I don't have that issue. And then, coat. This, is, this was from Depop years ago. It's a Topshop coat. Highly recommend getting coats on Depop. I got, I love Topshop coats just because I'm a tall girl. Their coats and jeans were always my go-to because look at the length. It goes all the way down to my calves, and that is not a thing that happens with any coats from anywhere for me. And yeah, we're gonna head out, gonna grab my coffee to go. The only thing is this, oh, do I want this coat? No, with a jumper, it's too tight. I feel like I exclusively wear this coat, but to be honest, so does it work because it's navy? I don't know. I'm unsure. Unsure whether to go for the navy or a sort of silvery beige. Is this too washed out? No, I think, I'm not, I can't even see. I literally can't even see there's no mirror. We need a mirror in our hallway. I do, I think this looks better, yeah. I'm gonna put milk in my coffee and head out. Air conditioner's fine, but shampoo, it just matters. My hair is done. Looking lovely. All right. fresh. Arrogant. <laughs> I'm not arrogant, I didn't cut it. <laughs> I wonder if this will stay. Wobble, wobble, wobble. So we just had a very slight trim. Like I said, just to tr like cut the straggly ends off, but not take off any length, which I think she has nails the brief on that the camera's probably gonna be flying and beautiful blow dry from hope like look how good that blow dry is lovely floppy hair and then we've got lovely shiny new dye just to take the warmth out because uh with dark hair dye it always just ends up going warm as time goes on because you wash it and it gets in the sun so it always feels lovely to have it redone so it's like all um smooth and cool again though i did go in the rain literally the second i got out of the salon and it's that misly rain that just ruins your hair <laughs> so i'm hoping that this blow dryer doesn't drop but it may do because of the the moisture in the air but it smells delicious as well not while you're driving mm. what's that a veda i had a treatment I can't, I don't know if it was an Olaplex treatment. They either do Olaplex treatments or they do Aveda treatments, but I always have a treatment because it helps to moisturize your hair. When's my treatment booked? Well, you could have one, but you go to a barber's. I get the, uh, they burn your nose and ear hair off instead. Nice. Back home. I love the feeling of having new glamorous hair. I do feel like the, um, the rain has affected it a little bit, sadly. I can freshen it up tomorrow with a, a Dyson Air app. I've just got a couple of deliveries, so I thought I'd open them with you. Seems like they're PR. I think they are. Yeah, that says Madeline Olivia. Oh, 
oh yes i remember this so um a lovely company called kaylee's jewels sent me an email and asked if i wanted to sorry i'm flicking my hair about i know that loads of people find that really annoying um <laughs> She asked if she could send me some of her jewellery. So it says, Madeline, I hope you like these pieces from my new collection. I have a special 10% dis discount code for your followers. Madeline10. Her Etsy is Kaylee's Jewels Co. And her Instagram is the same with underscores. And I'll leave a link below. So beautiful little packaging. Nice and nifty as well and small. I think lots of you are going to love this because it's very nature influenced. Oh my gosh, she sent so many things. How cool. <gasps> Oh, Alex, look. Yeah. Look, this is so cute. So they come in lovely little pouches. This is a hair, I didn't know she did hair clips. Oh, so they've got little pressed flowers in them. Look at that. Look. Whoa. How Ooh. cute is that? So you can do a nice little and that's lovely for my hair because it's dark so it will show up that is adorable i love that thank you and then we have some jewelry i want to open this box how sweet it must be oh <laughs> little m necklace is this my valentine's gift this looks like it's got little um almost like lavender or something so we have an m necklace i feel like this would also be really good for if you had like a teenage daughter i feel like that one i definitely would have to wear it alone how cute is that i love the color that would look really lovely with um like a white shirt I was thinking the other day that I want to start dressing and wearing more like boho -y clothes because I really love that style and I feel like because I went through that phase of like maybe going a bit too extreme into minimalism I started to just like wear like reduce my joy in my clothes um where I would wear like neutral clothes which I do I do love that still I do love that look too but I love a pattern and I think like my home, like my previous house, we like really were quite minimal with the way we did it up. And then this house I've really embraced color and pattern and each room I've decorated, I've added more to like this room, even now it's quite minimal still. Like I want to make some changes in the future. Like I really want to paint these cupboards a color. Oh my God, this is a key ring. It has an M on it and a little tassel. This is immediately going on my car keys. Oh my gosh, that is so lovely. Look at that. If you're someone who wants a new little key ring, you can get it with your initial and it's got, that's so sweet. I love that. And then we've got some other various earrings. So they, they look like bunny rabbits, which is really sweet. Here we have butterflies. This is where I feel like this would also be great for um, younger people as well. If you've got like a teenage daughter too. Um, or if you're someone who is my age and also just loves colour and fun things. Oh my gosh, I'm going to put these on now because it's Valentine's Day. She's giving me some heart earrings. So cute. Like I'm just in my era where I just want to have more fun with my way I dress and my style. And I think it's called like dopamine dressing. There's a, my friend Fran talks about that. And there's a girl called Demi Colleen who does that as well. How cute is that? <laughs> Basically, I just want to take myself less seriously and enjoy these things because I like them and they make me happy. Same as like when I started to get my nails done, I get nail art. Like, I was like, why the hell not? Just have fun. I mean, I can't really speak because this time I've got very simple nails, but look how lovely for Valentine's Day. And then the last set is these ones, which are also hearts. Oh, which ones do I wear? These have got like a little bit, of, these are a bit more boho. They've got like a wooden top to them. And then they've got loads of pressed flowers. And I just feel like loads of you will love this style of jewelry. Um, Cause it's very like boho, very like, I feel like it's very seventies, um, youthful, very cute nature oriented. 
and absolutely adorable. So thank you so much, Kaylee's Jewels, for that. What a generous gift, and I will leave the discount code below and go check out her stuff if you're into sort of nature-themed jewellery with these beautiful pressed flowers. And I absolutely love this hair clip. I feel like if I was to tie my hair back at the back and put that in, half updo would look adorable. Thank you so much. And then this, this doesn't look like PR, what I ordered. Ah, no, this is very boring. I just ordered some socks. <laughs> I'm gonna finish editing and we're probably gonna have a romantic evening. So I probably will sign off just for today because I'm doing my weekly vlogs now. I don't need to vlog extensively every single day. So I will show you the meal that Alex cooks. But other than that, hope you all had a lovely Valentine's or Galentine's. Good morning, it's Friday and I feel like I'm too tall and this camera is too big for me to vlog in the car. I need to figure out like a vlogging setup in the car because it would be so much more useful if I was just driving and chatting to you. Um, I completely forgot to vlog yesterday. My friend Ali came over, she does all my photography. We were doing a reshoot day for um, our website that we're working on. Uh, just shooting some old recipes. We did my dal, my cheap chilli sinkani, my sweet and sticky tofu, and my berry oatmeal. There's some really old recipes that are super popular on my website because they're so simple and easy and I think lots of people are really familiar with them. And the photos are just from like 2018. So we made those and reshot them. But I think because I'm so used to doing those shoot days with her where we just chat away, catch up, and <laughs> put the world to rights, that I completely forgot to pick up my camera. Today it's Friday though, and actually she's back later because I'm having a girly night this evening with Ali, Jazz, and my sister Charlie. I need to decide whether I'm cooking or we're gonna get takeaway. I feel like I wanna cook because I think that would be nice. My dad's coming over to help with the garden. He'll probably go at like four. I mean, I'll, I'll stop gardening at like four or five and then I can make something. I'm leaning towards doing some kind of like Mexican food. I did invite my sister over recently to make fajitas for her. So I don't want to do fajitas, but then it's like, what else would I do? I want to, I could do like tacos. I was thinking, could I do like a variety of like different dips, but then I don't want to make it too complicated. For some reason, it's been one of those things all week I've just not been able to make my mind up about. I think because I do food so much and my brain is like, what do I do? And also because I'm vegan, I want to make sure that if I'm inviting people over who aren't vegan, that they're going to eat something that they're in, they're going to enjoy. And I don't want them, I don't want to like, I don't know, because if I was just to cook them what I would want, I'm worried that that would be like weird for them because they're not vegan, they're not used to that kind of food. I don't know. I just, I need to, I need to decide at the gym so I can go get it on in the shops on the way home. What do I want to make? I could do a curry, but then I'm like, that's not very girly, is it? And then I was like, oh, I could do a pasta, because actually yesterday we were supposed to make one of my creamy tagliatelle recipes, but the lighting got so dark that it literally was like it was nighttime. I, we, we couldn't believe it. We were just like, what is going on? It was like an apocalypse. It <laughs> seems to happen quite frequently on our shoot days. The heavens opened, it was pouring with rains, it was dark as anything and I thought oh I could make that for them but then I'm like do they like mushrooms I know my sister doesn't love creamy um pasta sauces so it's very like I don't know I'm like what do I make because everyone's got different like preferences and I don't know I'm like does she not just maybe she wouldn't mind that because it is tomatoey and it's just got a little bit of like vegan cheese in it or creme, creme fraiche maybe she would like that but then I'm like, I don't know if, she, if any of everyone really likes mushrooms that much. I have a feeling that Ali doesn't love mushrooms. Oh gosh, I'm gonna think about it while I'm in the gym. My dad is coming, did I say that? My dad's coming, we're gonna do some gardening because it's the first like sunny day this week. So he's gonna help, I think he might mow the lawn or like we'll clear some veg beds. One thing we really need to do is trim the wisteria because it's February and February is the time of year. January, February is the time of year you're supposed to do your like second prune of your wisteria. We did a prune in October, I think it was in October, it was in autumn time. No, it wasn't, it was it was the end of summer. So you're supposed to prune it when it's like all bushy and leafy and then you prune it again when it's like, you know, there's no foliage because you wanna promote lots of blossom and less leaves and our wisteria the past couple of years we haven't trimmed it enough and it's just become very leafy and the reason that happens is because it's such a big plant it's so huge our wisteria 
that the light can't get into the sort of inner parts of the plant so you only get blossom on the front and it doesn't it doesn't like have that lovely big I don't know curtain of purple it just looks like loads of green with a bit of purple scattered in there and we have a very it's very big the, the wisteria so I think that can come become more of a thing when your wisteria gets really big like that so we need to keep on pruning it back because they grow they really do grow like crazy so yeah um I'm gonna yeah in the gym in, in my little uh, breaks between sets I'm gonna be like on Pinterest deciding what to make Part of me thinks I should just make like a one pot thing, not like, because the taco idea, like I could do guacamole and salsa and I could do tacos and then I could do like some peppers and it's, I feel like that's just going to become too much of a thing. Whereas if I was to do, if I'm gardening all day and then I've only got like an hour to prep, but if I was to do like a one pot, like a pasta dish or a, or a curry, I need to have a little think. I need to have a little think. I'm back home and I wanted to show you my outfit because I feel very cute. Because I wore um, a black jumper like this with my red corduroy shirt the other day and those of you said you really liked it. Probably because of the red. However, this morning I'm wearing this. This is Alex's outfit of the day. <laughs> Fuck a rot. Um, this is a warm, lovely turtleneck from a charity shop. This shirt I've had for ages, it's from Linen Fox. I, some of you will remember back in like 2019, 2020, I bought loads of stuff from Linen Fox and I still have all of them and I wear them all the time. It's one of my favorite brands and they do amazing linen. So what they, the way it works is on Etsy, um, they have loads of different styles and then you can pick the pattern and the color. So I had this in white, but I accidentally um, stained it in the, in the washing machine because we've got copper pipes for our, water and heating. White clothes get these horrible copper marks on them that don't come out and that happened to my white shirt. So with white clothes I never spend money on them anymore because inevitably they get those marks. It's just very annoying unless we literally repiped our whole house which we're not doing. <laughs> but this one is a lovely stripy linen. I love the buttons. I love the the sleeves have like the lovely roll up. I just look at the quality of it. It just is a gorgeous fit and I just I absolutely love this shirt. I have a beautiful new necklace from my friend Ali. She gifted me this yesterday for my birthday and it's a beautiful Cornish brand. And oh my God, what's it called? It's got this beautiful um, like texture to it. There you go. And I love how shiny it is. Like if you compare it to my rings, like it's such a pale, I think it is silver. I love it, what a lovely gift. Um, I'm obsessed, so Ali did really well with this. This is the brand Sati, um, and that's her website, Sati Design. So if you wanna grab a local Cornish jewelry maker, just beautiful. I've got my little, um, yeah, if you compare the color of these, maybe it's because they're older. These definitely, I actually think that is the case, because I remember these were really shiny when I got them. This is like the full moon and then the half moon. And these are from Edge of Ember maybe. And then these are my Bray Lab Diamonds. I've got my um, headband on that I can't stop wearing. I need to order some different colours because I'm going to be in the garden later and I want my hair out my face. I've got my Lululemon leggings and these I've had for ages and they're my favourite leggings by a mile. I really want to get them in different colours. I don't love that Lululemon aren't the most sustainable so I'm going to look on Vintage because they do such good leggings for my leg length because it's very difficult to find leggings that are long enough for me even the ones that sell the longer length they aren't long enough these are long enough you can't see because of these but they go all the way down to my ankles um i've got loads of girlfriend ones they are kind of nearly long enough but they still kind of like i have to constantly pull them up because i feel like they're i don't know anyway these are my favorites they don't fall down i don't have to pull them up they go really high up on my waist i think that's the issue Lots of leggings, they're long enough, but you have to, I have to pull them up a lot because they're not high-waisted enough. And I've got a long torso. So it's kind of an issue with leggings, finding the right size for my body type. These are gorgeous. I don't love them as a company in terms of like the sustainability and that kind of stuff, but you know, you've got to do your best. And I wear these through and through and I love the color, they're like a khaki. I've got my Trago socks on. <laughs> Literally they're Jeep socks and then my, um, Birkenstocks that have seen better days, but 
to be honest, I'm wearing around the house. I'd rather have a pair of shoes that can just be completely destroyed and I don't have to worry about them. They've got bits of paint on them, mud, everything. And that's my outfit of the day. I feel very cute in it and I'm ready to get in the garden later. The sun has come out and that's making me very happy. There's blue skies out there. <gasps> Yay! Yeah, I'm pretty sure these smaller leaves are the Cosmia. Yeah, this is fine. It's when you get to the top that it gets yeah, really like yeah. scary. Okay. Um. I'm going to prune the wisteria and I'm following this guy on TikTok called Michael Gardening Tips where he basically sh shares how to do it. I followed this in the summer where you prune it back to two buds above the base and you do the same now. So he says that this time of year in the winter, there should be about five buds above the base from the growth since summer. Um, so let me show you. So our wisteria is very like overgrown. You see it all coming out and we want to cut it right back. So there's loads of flowers over leaves. And when it gets really bushy, it just means there's loads of leaves and then the, the light can't get in to get all those lovely buds. So I've just done a couple here, you can see. So what I did is counted. Let me actually do one as an example. So here, this is the base and there's one, two, three, four, four buds, like he says. So that's one, two there. So I am gonna chop it right there, which feels scary, <laughs> but it should mean that we'll get loads of flowers and then anything dead, like these bits here, that looks like a dead piece. I'm gonna cut that as well, just so it's way tidier. Um, and then it should mean we have a very lilac, beautiful wisteria when the when May comes around. But there's yeah, there's lots of this growth coming out, and there's also lots of dead bits. So I need to just really go at it, and it's going to take me a while, but we will get there. Not all today. <laughs> this is the progress this is all the bit I've done and then you can see the difference up here how bushy and overgrown compared to here we can see all the individual bits this all needs to be cut down a lot because it's way too high up um, but yeah that's really successful look at our hyacinth so pretty they're all coming out and then hopefully everything else will start to grow Okay, so I'm gonna make the table. Unsure if I wanna put, um, this. the thing is, it's that awkward time of year. My hair looks crazy, I look like an egg. It's that awkward time of year where it's not spring, but it's not, it's kind of, it's still winter. So it's like all of my tablecloths are very spring or very summer. Well, there's nothing in here of interest to you, hun. So, mm, no, I'm not gonna do a tablecloth. I will do placemats. Oh, actually, I'm gonna put the ciders. Jazz likes the cider. There's a leftover from Christmas, because I don't like cider. I'll go for green. Green is very pretty. Bobby thinks that something is about to happen for her. It is not. I do like 
flowers on tables, but it, it does often feel like, no, it often feels like you can't see each other. Like I way prefer like candles. Do often like to do a little, pop that in the middle of the, mm, actually no, I want a plate on that. Oh, look, we can do the pretty ones. My Lara Do. My biggest regret is not getting more of these, these lovely scalloped, I'll show you in a second properly, these beautiful scalloped plates. They were on offer or like on sale on Lara Do. And I got four, the big ones, four the small ones and four the mini ones. And I really wish I got eight because they're like my favorite plates ever. And I only got, four of them but maybe they still sell them who knows I needed basically more um dining dineware dinerware what do you call it tableware my brain I needed more tableware for photos for shoots um and it is expensive so I was trying to find a good option and I prefer not to shop too often on places like Larrado because you don't really know where things have come from but I ain't perfect and sometimes in business you have to just make do what you can afford. I'm not sure if I like the way that looks. No I do not. That's nicer. I've heard on the grapevine that my sister is making cookies, which I'm very excited for. I really desperately need to go on the hunt for some new chairs. In fact, maybe I'll go this weekend because it's becoming an issue. All right, let's put some candles. I think candles are a much nicer way of doing it. This, I could probably move this down a little bit. Well, the only thing again is that it's like lots of sharing bits. It's like tacos. So I'm going to put everything out on the table to share. So probably just, and actually I've got this little hyacinth that I very stupidly trod on outside and I put it in a little vase so that can go here next to the that'll do for now nothing much else needed um because it's yeah it's going to be like sharing food so we're going to have the chili the tacos the cauliflower and then guacamole salsa the coconutty stuff and other little bits like salad and that kind of thing so it's 10 to five, I think they're gonna be here around six. So I don't think they will mind if I'm cooking while they're here, but I wanna have mostly everything ready. And I'm also not gonna get ready because it's my best mates. They're probably gonna show up in their clothes from work. I mean, I'd be very surprised if anyone showed up looking glam. <laughs> I think so, I'd be, I'd be more, I'd be less surprised if they showed up in their pajamas, because I think that's the vibe. So I'm just gonna stay in these clothes because I do not need to get changed and I'm very comfortable. I just need to do it washing up, empty the dishwasher, and then decide exactly how I'm doing everything. Oh, actually, I'm gonna get all the ingredients out first. So Alex went shopping. Did I say that already? Where's he put everything? Okay, black beans was one of the things. That was the only thing in here, I think. I really don't love my hair like this, but it's the most convenient <laughs> right now just to get the food done and to be hygienic. I don't want my hair in the food, obviously, because um, I'm cooking for other people. You I would not care. It's just me. So I'm going to start with the cauliflower. Um, and I just roughly found this on Pinterest earlier. It's not like I'm going to be particular about this recipe. I'm just gonna shove the cauliflower, I pinned it, shove the cauliflower in the oven. 
I just thought that looked really delicious and appealing. Come on. Would have been quicker for me to just edit. I'm just going to edit it on screen for you. <laughs> Cauliflower tacos, spicy roasted. And um, so I'm just using this as a gist. I realised I didn't actually tell Alex how many wraps and there's only 12, which is only three each. And I'm worried that's not enough food and enough for like the variety of having chili and also having cauliflower. So I'm gonna do nachos as like a sharing kind of starter and then the tacos second. So I've got my chili from yesterday. So I'm actually gonna put this just in a pan now because chili tastes so much better when it's like been cooking for ages. I'm just gonna put it in the bottom aga because then it can just plop away. The water. And I'm also gonna add an extra tin of, do I need to? Yeah, I'm gonna add um, an extra tin of black beans. Sorry if I'm rushing, it's because I left it way too late. It's quarter past five. I forgot that I kind of needed to make the table, make the bed, hoover. Cause I just, when you get in the garden, that's the thing, you just get stuck in the garden, don't you? Cause it's so enjoyable. I mean, actually doing that exterior was back breaking work. but I find myself getting stuck and I can't stop. And silly of me, because now they could show off in literally like half an hour. They won't mind if I'm cooking though. You can just chat. In go the black beans, give it a stir. And I'm just gonna bring that to a boil on the agar and then put it in the bottom oven. So, this is from Eat With Clarity. I haven't like checked the ingredients either. So I'm just gonna use what I've got and not really make it a thing. So they've got the cilantro lime crema or the coriander. It's also got a delicious cabbage slaw. So hopefully we've got enough of, um, we've got enough of all these ingredients. If I don't, it doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna get the cashews and put them in some hot water. And the good thing about the nachos as well is I can, quite easily whip those. This isn't the nachos, this is the cauliflower, but I can quite easily whip them together for everybody to nibble. Now we just chop up our cauliflower. So I'm doing this first. It's just one cauliflower, isn't it? Yeah. This is supposed to fill like 12 tacos. Well, it's not going to, is it? I think in all honesty, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to stop vlogging this because I need to just um, get this done and I, I'm gonna run out of time. It's my own fault. I apologize for getting your hopes up. I will show you bits and pieces as I do it, um, but I can't be moving the camera around to show you what I'm doing because it's just gonna make everything so much slower and me telling you what I'm doing. I'm in a rush now, so I can't, and Alex can't film for me because he's got to go out. So I've just got to stop filming and show you when it's done. And I'll link this recipe for the cauliflower tacos and my, my cheap chili sin carne, which is what we're having. And for the nachos, I've also got a nachos recipe, which you can use the chili for. So you just layer it up and it's got a recipe there for the cashew cheese. So all the recipes will be there. So you've got the idea if you wanted to recreate this as a dinner party for yourself, um, but I've got to just get cooking. So <laughs> I will show you the end result, but I will see you probably at the weekend. Mm. And then it's cauliflower. Mm. Well, it's the same, thanks Chabot and B. Good morning, feeling very glam this morning. It's Sunday, it's actually the day you're gonna be watching this vlog because I edited the footage and realized that it wasn't that long and I'm just trying to catch up with vlogs. I'm trying to do weekly vlogs where I'm actually vlogging my days and not just waiting till the weekend and vlogging on Sunday and then I don't have enough footage or it's a full day. Um, so yeah, this week I split it in half so I could get the two vlogs out and I've changed my kind of like days for upload. So for now, we're gonna try Wednesdays and Sundays and see how that goes. But yeah, it's all kind of like a new way of doing it. And I am, as you probably noticed, I'm someone who changes my mind. I'm a bit spontaneous, I'm a bit chaotic. So some weeks you get a vlog from me, some weeks you get two weeks, two vlogs from me. And I did have a period of time where it was Monday and Thursday and that went really well for a while, but 
I'm just, I'm trying to figure out the right mixture. And hopefully next week it will be that the video, video is scheduled for Sunday and I don't have to think about it this way. But I wanted to finish the vlog with me finishing the wisteria because it is not raining today. And um, I think it's gonna rain for the rest of the week. So I thought it'd be kind of nice to round the video up with me actually finishing that. Just making my classic mushroom on toast, but I've got an avocado to eat as well, which is good. The Friday evening went really well. Um, the food was delicious. I will link that recipe and actually the girls were like, let me know the recipe because they're trying to eat more like veggie, vegan food throughout the week and they struggle to think of recipes. So I sent that to them, it was really yummy. Um, had a lovely evening, just gossiping, playing games and it was really fun. Yesterday I just truly had a day, um, like I've been mentioning, where I didn't do anything. I had a true, true day off, proper, nothing to do, no expectation and this week compared to last week my mindset was really good so I did update you that I did try and have a day off last week where I didn't set any expectation of anything to do and I found it really hard and I had quite a lot of anxiety because I felt bad whereas this week I literally was on the sofa all day I was on the sofa I was a bit bit hungover um, I was on the sofa I was watching Love Island I was on TikTok uh, I had a bath hung out with Alex, I just really relaxed all day long. We had a takeaway in the evening and we watched, um, we started to watch Mr. and Mrs. Smith. And I really truly didn't do anything and it was wonderful. I felt really happy and relaxed and today I feel like invigorated for it. And I'm gonna keep doing that. I'm not saying I, every week on a Saturday I'm gonna do nothing and lie on the sofa, but I'm gonna do what my body wants. And that may be lying on the sofa, it may be going to the gym, it may be, um, going and hang out with a friend, it doesn't really matter. It's more about thinking about a day a week or time every week where you're just doing what you wanna do and what you're craving. And someone actually did leave a comment saying that they really struggle with that too, the anxiety of not doing stuff and they don't know how to fit it in because whenever they do just lie down or relax, they have those thoughts of, oh, what are you doing? And if you're in that same position, just give yourself allocated time. Because if you have to kind of like take it a step by step, you can't just suddenly do it and then you're, you're, you're into that routine. Give yourself like an hour a day or a day specifically every week. Obviously you have to make it fit within your work schedule, your family situation. But give yourself allocated time and tell people if you have a family to look after, then maybe there's an hour a day or an hour on a Saturday or an hour on a Sunday or an hour on a Wednesday Start small, give yourself that allocated time, put it in the calendar like you would an appointment. And that is your time where you do exactly what you want to do. And if that is literally lying on the sofa and doing absolutely nothing and not feeling guilty for it and fully thinking this is my time to do what I wanna do. If it's a long walk, if it's reading a book, if it's going and seeing a friend, if it's baking, if it's um, crocheting, painting, really doesn't matter. It applies to whatever makes you happy, whatever hobby floats your boat or whatever rest is important to you or is calling out to you. Start there, just start small and uh, make it accessible, make it simple and just do that and, and really reinforce the fact that there is no guilt and this is, I truly believe this is like more healthy and more important than any food intervention or any like sleep intervention. I think that actually resting and being happy and not stressed out all the time is more important than any of those other things. You know that statistic where people are like, stress is the same as smoking. Like it's so important that we are relaxing and resting. So if you're into wellness, <laughs> give yourself time off because you could be eating organic, healthy food all week and exercising and getting really great sleep, etc., etc. But if you're stressed the whole time, it's kind of undoing a lot of that effort. Um, there's my breakfast thoughts for you. Hope it didn't come across too preachy. I'm trying to like help those of you who are in the same boat as I am kind of saying it to myself. But the mushrooms are mushrooming. What I might do as well if Alex is busy this morning is I might go to the gym and just do like a really, cause I, I didn't, I missed one of my sessions. Go to the gym and go to the garden center or the shop on the way home cause I need some wire so that we can hang the wisteria a bit better. There's certain sections of it where it's coming a bit loose and it could do with being like propped up a bit better. So I could do that. Um, or I'll, I'll go find him and see what he wants to do. But yeah, this is my breakfast. So I've just fried garlic with olive oil and mushrooms. I always use chestnut mushrooms, 
because the darker mushrooms I find way tastier if you're not into mushrooms. Get chestnut mushrooms and try them. I chop them roughly. I do some of them in quarters, some of them in slices. You want to fry them like this on a, like a higher heat and let them do their thing until they really reduce. I think so many people think of mushrooms as like the mushrooms you get in a fry up that are practically boiled. Look at how golden these are and like that's what you want you want them to go golden and delicious and then when they're like really reduced and lots of the liquid and moisture has gone out they should half in size like this this frying pan was literally like this with mushrooms and they shrunk down so much at this point you want to season them i change it up i love salt and pepper some mixed herbs but i also love a dash of soy sauce that tastes so yummy um but you could put pesto in you could put some spices in there hot sauce and then i'll have this on toast I'll either have it on just toast with vegan butter or I'll have it with avocado. So I've got this in the fridge. I feel like we can savour some of that. So <laughs> we'll see how it is underneath. And I do have another avocado if this isn't that great underneath. And we'll have it on some, some of Alex's homemade bread, which loads of you keep asking every time I mention it because I feel like I show Alex's bread in every vlog. There is a recipe in my cookbook. That's where it is. Everyone says, where's, where's the recipe? Um, we have it in here. And... It basically is the, the whole basic recipe. I also have a video where we show how to do it. So um, yeah, grab the cookbook if you want it to hand so you have it all the time and you can shape it how you like. So this one that he made the other day was cooked in a pan, like a Dutch oven pan with a lid on and scored with a cross. Or you can shape it into a boule or you can do a loaf tin. So very flexible and perfect bread can anyone figure out where this dog's head is where has your face gone you're just a lump in a fluff there it is there it is yeah oh you're very happy in this bed aren't you little one yes she's so adorable so the avocado was definitely dead <laughs> It was black all the way through. So I have this from the other day. It was the coriander yogurt cashew um, like sauce that went on top. But I think I'm going to use this on the base of the bread, the toast. I think that would be delicious. And then I'll top it with these mixed sprouted beans. Toast is ready, I think. Oh, no, it needs another go. Because um, it's kind of like brunch, so I'm making it a bit more fun. And I'm gonna make this again because it was very easy. It was literally cashews, coriander, lime juice, and coconut yogurt. Um, the recipe is a vegetarian recipe, so it had just normal yogurt in the recipe, but I just subbed it for coconut yogurt and it's delicious. This is giving like I've gone to a fancy vegan brunch place vibes because they would have a delicious blended like avocado, coriander yogurt dip like that would be totally on the menu top it with our delicious golden mushrooms you see how the difference of these compared to the ones that you might have like with a fry up in the uk they've got that beautiful color and the soy sauce really helps that but let the mushrooms shine let them cook down with garlic and olive oil and let them do their thing and they'll get that beautiful dark Color. let me show you because it just looks so good and I'm just campaigning for mushrooms because they are so good for you they are so delicious and actually the hot sauce acts as such a good glue for the mushrooms if you're vegan they're full of selenium and vitamin d um I'm 99% certain because those are two things that are harder to come by on a vegan diet so it's really important you have variety and you're eating lots of different fruits and veg so it's more about like adding things to your diet over restricting that's how i like to look at it within veganism eat more plants have more variety eat with the seasons try new things so if there's a vegetable that you hate and if mushrooms is one of them though it's not technically a vegetable <laughs> but if there's something that you don't like try making different recipes with it in different ways um disguising it or trying new methods that you love so that you can have more variety and not limit yourself sprouted beans so there's some things I used to hate, like I used to hate carrots and I now eat them all the time. I don't love beetroot, but I do still eat it. And there are certain recipes that I do love beetroot in. 
Okay, I do normally have like a seed mix that I put on top, but we seem to run out because Alex puts it in the bread. Um, but I do have this from the Cornish Sea Salt Company. It's the Super Seed Topper, and this has golden linseed, smoked sea salt, nigella seeds, poppy seeds, dried garlic, and dried onion. So this is a nice one to just shove on top. And there we have our delicious breakfast. Cannot wait to dig into that, oh my gosh. <gasps> Got myself ready for the day, kind of. And I was literally just thinking, this has transformed my mindset just now. I was like in my dressing gown. And if I wasn't vlogging, I could so easily just stay in my dressing gown or like shove on a pair of gross trousers and a t-shirt and go outside and feel gross. But because I was vlogging, I was like, no, I'm gonna like actually make myself feel good today. It makes such a difference. I think I'm gonna go to the gym, go to Screwfix or the garden centre to get some wire and to get a pair of secateurs because ours we left out in the rain, I think, and they've gone rusty and they're really blunt. And come back and do the wisteria because it's sunny all afternoon and that's gonna be what we do today. So let's get on with it. And if you're ever wondering what's on my lips, it's always the Typology lip oil, the tinted ones. This is the red one and I always wear the pink one as well because sometimes people ask and it's basically never lipstick. It's always the lip oil. I love the way it looks, just like your lips, but better. Mum was just telling me that Cornwall College do free classes and she's done a few of them. So she's done like painting and drawing and I think she's starting a new one soon. So in light of um, this conversation that I've been having <laughs> about hobbies and stuff. I think I'm gonna have a little look. They've got a massive list. They do obviously proper degrees and bachelors and uh, diplomas, they do everything, but they do have such a variety of things. So you can do like full degrees or diplomas that take years, or you can just do evening classes. And so I'm gonna filter it and see what free classes they've got. I have a feeling that my mum's got it wrong. It's free class for her because she's a certain age. I just find it hard to believe that there's free classes for everyone. But maybe there is, I don't know. I'm gonna have a little look. Um, and if there is, if they're not free, they may, maybe they're just like subsidized, maybe they're just cheaper. Cause how nice would that be if I did like a, I could do like a drawing class or a sewing class or ceramics and it would be in the evening and I could just go and do that. So it would be a, a certain way of me making sure I'm switching off. So I'm gonna have a little look and we will, I will update you. Cause actually I was watching Lily Pebbles the other day and she was doing, she did ceramics. Oh, it wasn't Lily Pebbles. So Lily Pebbles did ceramics and Anna edit. I was watching her as well and she was doing sewing. Um, but I did do textiles and I do know how to sew. Um, and I did do art GCS, I did art A-level. So it's not like I'm um, inexperienced. It's like part of my, I think I should start with art because I did art A-level and fun fact, I was in the top like 1% or even less than that for my A-level in terms, I think I got like 100% or something crazy. Um, I can't remember, so that might not be quite right, but I did get, I was like top, top, top for art in my, in the whole of the UK um, because I was a stickler when it came to coursework and I nearly did that as my degree. I did art history, but I nearly went and did a uh, foundation course at Falmouth and applied to do fine art. What a different life I would have led. <laughs> so I, I kind of like feel like I should just go back to that because I know it and it is a career path I always wanted to follow and I didn't. Uh, mainly because I had, I guess, teachers focusing on the fact that I needed the academic side to maintain that level of security and um, not let that slip, which I understand, it makes sense, it's sensible because doing art as a as a degree, it's, it's unknown, isn't it? But sometimes I look back and think, oh, I should have just done art, shouldn't I? But I wouldn't have met Alex, I wouldn't have met Alex. It's not like I'm using my degree, is it? <laughs> doing YouTube. My, um, my teachers are probably very disappointed. <laughs> Workout done, garden wire and secateurs secure these are the exact same ones as the ones we have but new to be fair i think the other ones we've had for a long time because we don't have a shed yet um we've got everything stored in a box and the lid came off and it made everything wet so lots of our tools got damaged and and it's crazy that we don't have a shed but when we were doing like renovations we demolished that shed that we used to have and it's honestly probably if i was to actually say what my biggest renovating regret is it's removing that shed 
Um, at the time I feel like I got very carried away and it was something that the builders recommended to do so that we could demolish some of that stuff on top of where the septic tank used to be just to sort of cave it in and fill it in um, rather than buying material to do that because it would have taken up a lot but in hindsight I just think it was one of those things where it's like you're rushing and you're not really having the time to plan so if you are doing a renovation project I'd really recommend don't make rash decisions um, on things like that especially when it comes to demolishing things or doing quite big things because I just really regret that. Obviously, I'm not going to blame the builders because it's not their home. They they didn't know like what I need or want in my life. And maybe they just thought it was a good idea. And then I was like, yeah, sure. Um, but yeah, in hindsight, it's just meant that we haven't had any outdoor storage for anything. So like things like lawn mowers, seat cushions. Um, and the reason we haven't got a new shed is because I can't make my mind up basically where to put it. And obviously a shed is expensive. So I want to make sure it's in the right position. Um, and there's just been other things to to pay for so it's like one of those things that just kind of every month gets kind of pushed pushed aside um, and we wanted to make sure we had our hallway like lights sorted and all this sort of stuff and you know renovations are expensive and we've spent a lot of money and a lot of time doing our renovations and I guess it just all caught up on us and I've talked about this so many times but I am just in this mindset now of doing things slowly and carefully and I feel like that's meant that the shed thing is one of those decisions I just I just don't want to make unless I'm 100% sure. Also, we were going to get a shed behind the back of the office, but we're painting the office and that keeps on getting put off. So it's one of those things that you can't do this until you do this and blah, blah, blah. So yeah, um, we will get a shed at the back of the office 100% once it's painted and all sorted. Um, and then I do really want a shed at the front of the house so that we have um, space for other things or potentially this is the thing it's like I can't make my mind up because also I think we should have one at the bottom of the garden because that's where you're doing a lot of the gardening especially for the veg beds and if we get a greenhouse then you want to be able to have a shed and a greenhouse next to it or close enough that you can get all your tools and your stuff because we've got a, a garden on a slope you don't want to be like walking all the way up and back and forth constantly so yeah, it's one of those things, it's, I haven't wanted to make a rash decision, but I think first and foremost, this summer, 100%, we will, this spring, we'll get a shed behind the back of the office once I've painted, because then we can put all of our most important things um, in there and then make the decision about where the other one will go at a later date. Um, but yeah, that's why that's happened. Anyway, that was a ramble I didn't expect. Let's go home. <laughs> also, my gym workout was good. It was annoying, it was very busy, so I couldn't use the squat rack but I managed to find a little corner and just use dumbbells and kettlebells and had a very good lower body workout. Very sweaty. I think I may have just made my dream lunch. So we've got a ginormous amount of lettuce sitting underneath everything. And then I've got a cucumber, the bean sprouts I had for breakfast as well. The leftover, um, this cabbage like slaw from the tacos on Friday night, some kimchi, and then I just whipped up some tofu and just seasoned it at the end with soy sauce and sriracha. And then I've um, drizzled over lemon juice and then there was a little bit of chickpeas left over from the other day, so I've put that under there too. And it is a mountain of color. And then I'm just gonna, this is not actually that liquid anymore because it, it was runny the other day where I could kind of drizzle it on. I'm just gonna kind of drizzle it on, but not really. On top, and this is gonna be the dream lunch. Just what I need post gym.
this is what I look in. Loads of progress. He's all clean. He's all clean. And then this is the bushy bit that still needs doing. This bit though, there is a creeper there too. You can see it starts down here. So it's like um, the wisteria goes whoosh and then here and we need to reattach it over here because I want it to do the same on this side as it does on that side. Um, it kind of does but it's all the way down here so we just need to hook it up so that all these pieces that are coming out all the way up are just the buds none of these wispy pieces and um, that was very scary up the top but that's just so much better and uh, yeah that will be the bit that will be probably kind of a bit difficult because there's a creeper there so I need to look up how to prune a creeper correctly as well so I don't shock that either but um, I think it will be similar in terms of just cutting off the wispy bits we're gonna go inside and have a cup of tea and I'll see you in the next vlog. Hi.